Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is your host, That Creepy Reading, and today I like to present three more shit slash crappy positive, or whatever you want to call it. But before I go on with the usual proceedings, I think I should at least let you know about my special guest, everyone's favorite Asian topless maker. Introduce yourself. T Tats from Tats Top Videos. Uh, yep, the leader and director of the 353,000 subscribers. I do top countdowns, as you know. And Tats is here to help me present you three absolutely awful shit passes. Starting with Metroid Fusion Suit, followed by Super Mario M World, ending with an absolute shitter, saving the best for last, carry.jpg. If for anything else, stay tuned to the end of the reading just so you can hear how bad this creepypasta is. And with that being said, let's begin. After playing some Super Smash Bros and after playing with Samus, I decided to check out Metroid Prime. I had looked at several copies of the game on eBay, but only ended up buying a wireless GameCube controller of all things. Then I thought at looking at a Game Traders for a copy. If you don't know what Game Traders is, it's a store where they sell pretty much any game they have. I found a copy of Metroid Prime and asked the clerk about it. He said that the game worked fine and the disc had no scratches and then proceeded to sell it to me for a whopping $20. And then I left the store with my brand new game. As I played the game, I was instantly hooked. I loved the gameplay elements such as turning into a morph ball, different types of beams, and different types of visors that screams to me there is a lot to do in the game. After playing through it once, it took me around two months to finish, I decided that I wanted more Metroid game. With all the money I could scrape together, I went back to Game Traders and bought a copy of Metroid Fusion for my Game Boy Advance. After playing the new game for around an hour, I decided to look up some easter eggs for Metroid Prime. What I found was a way to get the fusion suit in Metroid Prime, which is what I regret. After I put the suit on, the game screen cut to black and then stared at me, started me at the last boss fight even when I put the suit on at my ship. I, I expected this to be the work of some hacker, but decided to keep on playing anyway due to the fact that summon hacks can be in a word. Awesome. Instead of the usual boss, another Samus head emerged with a caption for the boss being called, Samus, overcome yourself. I found this awesome until I started fi fighting her. When her health was popped up, it was massive. I could barely lay a scratch on her. After a while, I got her down to three-fourths of her health, but then ended up failing when she hit me with her final charge beam. Instead of her visor going out, it played the scene in my character's view, with another Samus walking up to her. She then removed my character's helmet. My character kept screaming, Please don't do this! I don't want this! The other Samus charged up her beam and shot her in the face of an incineration beam when it went to the view of the other Samus's legs. <sighs> she ran, but the face of the real Samus was nothing more but a skull looking up. The skull looked well, the skull looked at the screen as her eyes, get this, started to glow red. It then cut to black and the GameCube was shut off. I was horrified and started up the game again and just removed the suit never to put it on again. But every time I see Samus's reflection in this game, I see her skull with those glowing red eyes. Moving on. My name's Jacob and I'm 17. I would like to share one of my earliest memories as a kid. Since I was born in 1997, I didn't play any old games like Super Mario Bros. I grew up with a PS2 that I bought when I was 8 years old. At 10 years, I discovered emulators and wanted to check out an old, some of the old games out. Everyone suggested to me Super Mario World, so I downloaded it. I really liked the game, so I completed it 100%. After that, 
I didn't really know what to do. And that's when I discovered hacks for the game. One day, out of curiosity, I checked the bad hack section and there I only found one hack simply called M World. Thinking M stands for Mario, I downloaded it. That same day, I saw a man go missing on the news. When I started the hack, everything seemed normal. I started level playing and eventually died. After normal death animation, a message appeared stating, M is here for you. I was confused, but I continued playing. When I got to Leggy, I had only one life. Leggy killed Mai, and this time, after the normal death animation played, a message appeared saying, M is here for you. <laughs> you cannot escape. I was really scared and deleted the hack immediately. The next day, I started my computer to an error message saying, M really wants you. I was scared, and when I tried closing the message, another one would pop up. It didn't allow me to open any program except the SNES emulator. I opened up the emulator, and the error message disappeared. Then I wanted to close the emulator, but it didn't allow me. Instead, the MWorld hack, which somehow re returned and opened itself. Oh no! The title this time didn't say Super Mario World as it should, but instead said Super Majin World, and there wasn't a trademark symbol. Copyright, you guys are demons. Ugh. Instead of Mario coming of, you know, instead of Mario coming some sort, okay, yeah. Instead of Mario coming, there should be a comma there, some sort of red figure came from the other side of the screen. Then the man looked exactly the same as the missing man that was on the news fell from top of the screen and the red figure kicked him into a pit. The sky turned red and <laughs> did I just read that? Did I just read that? Okay, the, the, the sky turned red, and the sign, Nintendo 1991-1992, turned into, get this, Nintendo 666. Oh god. I managed to take a picture of the screen that is clearly poorly photoshopped after that message appeared, saying, you are next, Jacob. I screamed and pulled my computer out of its socket. The next day, feeling braver, I turned on the computer, and the hack, everything was like the normal copy of Super Mario World, except that message after the death animation that was saying, M has already got you. Later that day on the news, I saw they found the missing man laying in a deep pick. Oh god. Moving on. My name is Mason, just Mason. My last and middle name don't matter. None of it matters. All you need to know is carry.jpg? Yeah, I know what you're thinking right now. I know what you're thinking too. That, man, this kid's batshit crazy. Or, screw this kid, let's not listen to him. Oh my gosh, my brother, you got any watermelons? Well, you need to listen to me now. I saw the cursed picture of Carrie White from the 2013 remake, and I wish I never see it again. It all began one day. I was home alone and my parents were working both day and night shifts. So basically, I was on my own for months now. However, my birthday was right around the corner and I was waiting for something in the mail like I always do. Since my parents are so busy at work, they'd always send me presents in the mail. Today was that day and I couldn't wait. I was watching some ordinary gamers, go Mudahar, on YouTube all day, but rush outside when I heard a mailman come and he had a package before me with two remakes of Carrie the 2002 remake, and the 2013 remake. 
I found it strange because the 2013 remake was released in theaters not too long ago. It was also strange that the 2002 remake was bundled with the 2013 remake. I wonder where my parents got these two strange discs. I decided to go look deeper into this. After getting the package from the mailman, I went back to my house and straight up onto my computer. I logged into Gmail and emailed my parents at work because they're always at their computers. And this is the only way I can communicate with them as of now. First, I emailed my father. I asked him, Dad, where did you and Mom get the 2013 and 2002 remakes of Carrie? He responded with, Your mother and I got the disc from a very nice clerk named Screamin' Sam. No joke. He works at Blockbuster not too far from our house. You can go thank him later today for clearly doing his job. Love you, son. Dad. My mother responded in the same way, but she wondered why the clerk's name was Screamin' Sam. Hmm, I think it's because of a creepypasta. I went to Blockbuster a few hours later after playing a bit of Sonic the Hedgehog. I love that series. Two, thank Screamin' Sam. The guy was very nice, but I don't see why they call him Screamin' Sam. He said it's because he listened to a lot of heavy metal, especially Breaking Benjamin. Since I was very pleased by the carry discs, Sam said I could have any movie or game I wanted in the store. What a nice guy! I browsed the store looking for a movie in case the 2013 remake of Carrie disappointed me. I picked up the new Silent Hill movie and returned home. I decided to watch a 2013 remake of Carrie first. I popped a DVD into my computer and begun to watch. For a few seconds, my computer screen was filled with static. Then a flash of Carrie White was on my screen. I could tell it was her, but the image was too fast to make out. The movie played as normally up until a certain point. When Carrie was thrown into the closet by her mother, Margaret White, Carrie began to scream and cry, but louder than originally heard. In the original movie, Carrie only screamed at her mother after throwing her in the closet, but now she was blatantly screaming. Like, now she was being torn apart. The camera then pans to Carrie inside the closet, banging on the door and scratching on the door until her fingernails broke off. Blood gathered where her fingernails were. Then, the camera pans back to Margaret White, who says to me, You did this to my daughter! You better pray for the forgiveness! What the hell? I said to myself. Margaret was breaking the fourth wall, direct talking directly to me. Something was wrong here. Very wrong. Carrie still screamed at the closet. Now, helpless to escape from it, a loud banging noise was heard from the other side of the door. The camera then pans to Carrie, banging, on her, he banging her head on the door while saying, Help me! Over and over. Her eyes also followed me. What the f censored fuck is going on? I asked myself, then I shut off my computer. There was one problem. It wouldn't shut off. I tried to shut off my computer again, but Carrie began to whimper, as if she couldn't stand the thought of me not being able to help her. She puts a she picks up a machete that was on the shelf of the closet and then screams, "Don't ignore me, Mason!" and stabs herself in the head with a machete. I repeat, stabs herself in the head with a machete. Ugh. Blood splatters on my screen, censoring what happened, but then again, you, you the, the machete would have to hit the head for it to splatter, so didn't really censor anything. But moving on, even though a child could guess what happens, especially since you just saw it. Was this a part of the movie? The blood appeared to be dripping down my screen. But how? I wiped the blood away, trying not to regurgitate what I saw. And then I saw the image. Carrie.jpg. 
Carrie's entire face was shown on my screen with a massive stab wound in her head. It looked like a JPEG image when I first saw it. Carrie then screams violently, like a screamer image you would find on the internet. The scream was ear piercing and lasted about 30 seconds until a yes or no option appeared on my computer. It said, would you like to save this image? Not taking any chances because I'm a smart little cookie, I clicked no. Best decision I ever made. Carrie screamed again and begun to slash at my screen with her machete. She carved the words, I'm coming for you on my screen and <gasps> then my computer shut off on its own. Was this a power outage? I looked around and at every other like, electronic in the room, but it, they were all perfectly functional, except for my computer. Did it say the image even when I asked it not to? Did you just say you were thankful for not saving the image? The world may never know. I then decided that this was just a bad dream and that I should go sleep it off. I slept for a few hours, but then I felt a presence. The presence grew stronger and stronger as I lay in bed. I heard a faint whisper nearby. Mason. I'm here, she whispered. My eyes shot open and then immediately I saw Carrie White in some prom dress. The same stab wound, the same machete. I immediately jumped out of bed and ran downstairs like a bat out of hell. My heart was racing as I couldn't believe what was actually happening. Carrie could easily catch up with me, though without warning, she lunged at me and pinned me to the floor. She then proceeded to punch and kick me violently. I swear, blood was rushing out of me. Carrie had beat the shite out of me so violently that I blacked out. I woke up in a hospital a few hours later. The doctor said I had broken nose and a few black eyes. Other than that, I was completely okay. Disoriented and groggy, I thought Carrie White. I thought I saw Carrie White for the last time. The problem was, I wasn't right. She appeared directly in front of me, blood all over her. Strangely, she did not have the stab wound from before. This is obviously from the infamous prom scene. Why didn't you help me, Mason? She asked. A few days later, after serious recovery, I returned to Blockbuster with the two discs, and Screamin' Sam was still there blasting his funky heavy music across the store. I do not know how he didn't get fired. I asked him for a refund, and he happily agreed. As it turns out, he's great friends with my parents, and is not great with horror. I could still pick out any game or movie I wanted, and the game I chose was Battlefield 4, and I played it for the rest of the day trying to forget what happened when I saved, which you did not, and then you clearly stated that you're happy that you did not, saved the carry.jpg image. Carrie no longer appeared after I returned the disc, but sometimes I see her in my dreams looking at me with those eyes. Every cliche in the book. Dear God. Ah, uh, dear God. Ah. Uh. All right, time to move on to the critique. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Wasn't that a shit fest? Now, last time I did this, you guys seemed to complain that not all the stories were all that bad, and I'll admit, some of them have good premises, but oftentimes they're barred down by so many cliches I want to shoot myself. So, I brought my friend Tats here, and we fixed the audio issue from before. So, say hi, Tats. Hi. Alright. Tats. <laughs> what? Alright. I don't know, you just said that, and I all said right. that. So. Metroid Prime Fusion Suit. What do you think of that? Well, it's not to say about it, Jesus. Um, <laughs> it's got everything, like, most cliche thing ever. I mean... Spooky, scary skeletons with glowing red eyes. That, that's all I could think throughout <laughs> the entire story. Th that end. Just a skeleton. It, it wasn't used properly. Um, so, and there's also no build-up. I mean, like, basically, let me summarize the story for you. I went, I'm too big of an idiot to buy a game off of eBay for real cheap. And on top of that, I got overcharged for a game I probably could get for on Amazon for like $5. 
$20. I mean, like, don't get me wrong. Metroid Prime's a good game, but $20 for a Metroid Prime game? Are you kidding? Are you an idiot? I'd like to think so. <laughs> uh, and then he goes off, and you can clearly yeah. tell he doesn't even know anything about the game when he's listing stuff like Morph Ball, Beams, and Visors. Attach, you can attest to this. The, the, the different types of lasers and morph balls were in almost all the Metroid Prime and Metroid games. It was in every Metroid game, as far as I remember. It, um, why, why would you want to buy, like, the Game Boy Advanced version of Metroid View? Like, why not just emulate it or, you know, or, or, or even play, you know, other games and that doesn't make sense. And he said, I expected it to be the hacker. Who the hell could hack that? Maybe on the... If he's actually buying a legit version of a game, there's like no way you could probably hack it. There might but. be ways to hack it, but I don't really know of real any way to do an on-disc hack. But, you know, it's probably possible. But So, we also know that Samus never gets a voice up until Metroid the Other M, oh, and we don't talk about Metroid the Other M, yet in this game, the guy clearly states that he's like, please don't do this. Oh, wait, I um, don't want, who the fuck says that? Uh, uh, oh yeah, I sort of messed up. <laughs> I thought it was the Game Boy Advance, no, it's the GameCube, yeah. isn't it? That's right, yeah. No, he said he was going to buy the Game Boy Advance, no, it's the GameCube. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Um, but then I'm still looking through and it says like, uh, you know, that the eyes start glowing red. And that's spooky, not scared. Before, has it? Oh, no, no, red eye. I mean, like, you've seen Sonic.exe, right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yes, uh, replace Sonic.exe with Samus, who actually talks in a game where she never talked. So, again, I can believe in a lot of hacks, but again, adding completely new content like this is nigh on impossible. And finding a voice, I mean, like, I just kind of picture, you know, the voice actor for, you know, for Newgrounds going like, Die, bitch, die, doing the same voice for this. Yeah, and it says, like, the GameCube turned off, and I was like, I was horrified. But I wanted to know what happened, so I turned it back on again. So why? <laughs> if that happened, why would you? If if my thing did that, if I saw something horrible like that, I wouldn't be like, "Wow, that was so intriguing. I must see more." You know, and turn it back on again. No, you don't. You don't do that. You just go like, "Okay, that that was scary. I'm not going to touch that again in case it fuses and blows up the whole house." And um, I'm gonna do something else. Yeah, you don't put it back on again once you've seen something. Yeah, like that. You're, it's just like but, yeah, 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 goodbye. Yeah. All right. Now, why do we move on to um, the M world? We have a lot to say about this one. Not only is the story poorly written, <clears throat> but it's also apparently <laughs> so is the artwork. <laughs> oh God. Which we will show yeah, you. Yeah, we'll, we'll have that up on the screen now. Um, the most realistic artwork you've ever seen. It's the so real. The greatest screen it, it caps and Sonic.exe. It took minutes to Almost make. Almost 10 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Man, that would, that would have been a long time. But sadly, the guy had computer issues, so, you know, he didn't have that much issue doing it. Anyway, the, the, what makes me sad is that the guy's like, I'm 17, born in 1997. Well, that's the same year I was born, so I feel magical about this. Um, so, so, so apparently this person's my age, and he, he doesn't seem to own any sort of, um, you know, Google Drive, which is completely free. You know, you could clearly just run this, and there's so many lowercase i's, there's so many weird spellings, and... Oh my god, this is a very cliche story, <laughs> and it's not written good at all that isn't me fucking up because of my dyslexia this is the story is literally written word for word the way i read it and it says other things that don't make sense like i really like this game so i completed 100 percent after that i really didn't know what to do and i'm like um play another <laughs> game um or go outside watch tv you don't have to download Say hello hacks for to the your game. friends Pretty that sure. you haven't talked to in probably years yeah, so... Oh my gosh, yeah. There's... Yeah, there's this whole thing. And then at the very end, it just goes cop-out, you know? It's like, I want to make Sonic.exe, except I want to be Mario, and... We have... What are kids scared of these days? 666, throw that shit on there! 
Oh, gosh. What else are they scared of? Oh, red skies. Ooh, we can... MS Paint it in. Maybe... Maybe M stands for Miyamoto, the guy who made Nintendo. The guy telling him that M is here for you. Maybe because you shouldn't really play this game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Miyamoto made that hack, and he, he, he had really bad... Um, Especially for him. He, he had really bad uh, photoshopping skills, Miyamoto did. He just upgraded and he didn't know how to use it, so he kind of made that, and, uh... <laughs> <laughs> this is a real creepypasta, you know, because the guy just happens to not be able to spell or write properly. It, that picture, you know, um, I, why don't we, uh, quickly dis dissect this picture. We can clearly tell that this picture is fake, because around the letters you can see yeah. where the guy drew in with the, uh, you know, MS Paint marker. It says uh, the well in the actual um, thing it says the title itself didn't say Super Mario World it said Super Imagine World and there wasn't a trademark and uh, if you're looking at the picture right now yeah we see that the uh, why are those mysteriously white outlines around the title and why suddenly is the J really weirdly wrote and um, in the center of the screen Mario has somehow been replaced with a green slate a or green something square of above death. the you know, um, just for, and it's it's a it's a, it's a green red. square death touch. You don't question the green square. And the red thingy is supposed to be the devil, but it looks like the silhouette of a female with pigtails. It, it kind so. of remi if you guys ever seen Dark Matter twenty five twenty five's animations, it kind of reminds me of a silhouette of their depiction of Satan, and it's kind of hilarious. And I don't get that. Did he want, like, I know the sky's red, but did he, like, think, okay, I'm gonna make this red, and then he, like, nah, forget it. And then he forgot the color in the rest of the background. Has he ever heard of and Magic And there's a black wand dot next to the M. Yeah, and there's a black dot next to the M, I don't um, know what that In the is. story, the guy said that he jumped off from the top and committed suicide, so I, I'm, I only can assume that someone poorly photoshopped that in. And then I'm only just noticing now. What are those black lines next to the? Green oh, that's square? him uh, redrawing in the. Uh, <laughs> that's him redrawing <laughs> All in right. the lines for the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I just noticed it. I wondered what it was. And then at the very bottom there, you got Nintendo Six Six Six. Um, which is clearly overlapping the uh, the border of the uh, picture yeah. there. Well, you can see like there's like, Mario underneath that green square, so. Yeah, so yeah, that's where Mario was. You can see his feet. Oh my gosh, you can see his feet. The guy didn't even do it properly. Yeah. Um, now, you can also see uh, Nintendo 666 there. Um, it ju the guy just basically made a rectangle and used Comic Sans or a Nintendo themed. Or, or just basically stole the uh, Windows Movie Maker idea of doing banners. <laughs> that's what they do. <laughs> Yeah, they uh, essentially just took the Windows Movie Maker of banners Phenomenal. and yeah, that that's how you get that. Oh, that is just absolutely oh, yeah. lovely. Now, why don't we move on to carry.jpg? Why don't we do that real quick? Well, obviously it's promotional for um, it's just a promotional creepypasta for Battlefield Bell, Four. Uh, they've so, sunk um, in this yeah. low that they got like uh, you know, little kids basically writing creepypastas to help promote their things. Ugh. and this one's a. Uh, What's your name? Is Screaming Sam? Sc oh, that's not obvious at all. Hello, my name is Screaming you know. Sam. You would you like to meet my friend Pedophile Paul or Spooky Scary Skeleton Steve? <laughs> He wrote that, uh, he wrote that <laughs> classic creepypasta. Spooky, scary Steve. <laughs> he wrote that classic creepypasta Metroid M Fusion suit. Spooky, scary skeleton Steve. Why don't you say hi? Hello, I'm 12. I, I can tell. Um, but yeah. It, it, he said that blood was coming out of the screen. Um, as in, was it the computer screen, or was it like, like, was it like on the TV? Like, was like, it? The, the computer like screen. there's blood on the outside of the screen. Yeah, it was. So it was. It was the computer screen he was talking about. Because I got confused. I don't know if he meant TV or the actual monitor screen he was yeah, talking about. Yeah, it was about. the monitor. Why don't we start off from the beginning? He goes on to say, "My name is Mason, just Mason. My last and middle name do not matter. None of it matters." This creepypasta is we want to know what your name, quite 
awful. The main issue with this creepypasta is that it seems to include a lot of information that is flat out unneeded, not needed for this to make sense. The guy keeps on repeating the words 2013 remake over and over and over again to the point where my mouth is hurting from the repetition of that word. Y you know what I'm saying, Tats. You probably heard that like nine times. Yeah, and another thing is that when you write in a creepypasta, don't put basically, because it makes it, you know, basically this, basically that. It makes it sound like you know everything, and, you know, it's just don't put it in. <laughs> I would like to mention that this is from the Some Ordinary Gamers Wiki, and the guy directly talks to Mudahar. Sorry, you, you didn't get shit pasted by him. He got shit pasted by his, I don't know, ripoff. That, that's what I am, apparently. Tats, I'm, I'm just a ripoff. A ripoff. You you basically got, you got <laughs> shit posted by Diet Mudahar. I I'm sorry that was that's all I could say about that. Um, why don't we go on? The issue is is that it says that this was carried on JPEG, and I don't recall a JPEG being in there. The guy's like, I see a picture, but it screams at me. So is the picture just like you know opening his mouth? Because in that case, it would be like it would be more attuned to a GIF. Why not get carry that yeah, mob exactly. or carry the DVD or carry dot MKV and then you can say you pirated it. But no, you this and another thing I noticed is that I hate to be nitpicky here, but if you if you read the beginning of this, the guy's like, as I usually my parents are working and busy all the time and they mailed me this game. This this these movies. Yet And they ever come home. But the thing is is that if he if they bought the DVDs from Screamin' Sam, why the fuck would they need to mail it to themselves? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the guy he's like, I I got it in the mail, and then there, apparently these DVDs are so close that he could walk up and pick it up himself. So this leaves me questioning: one does. Blockbuster even mail you things? Two, why don't the parents pick it up on their way home? Three, why don't the parents buy it over the phone and he simply walks up to the store so they don't have to mail it because it's in walking distance? And I was gonna say the other thing is that like his name is Screaming Sam. Like I'm pretty sure no one cares what your name is. When I used to work in retail, no one cared what your name is. You don't go, Hi there, my name's Screaming Sam. Would you be interested in some DVDs? You know, it doesn't it doesn't work like that. <laughs> no one's gonna. Who says that? I mean, that's what that's what really bugs me about this. Like, what, what Wait, is your name Screaming, Screaming Sam? Sam? And why, why? I would like to get your manager. This is BS. That, that's a scary name. Manager, but, is that really his name? Or someone said well, that. Well, well, let me get pedophile no, Paul. His name's why Jimmy. Why do I get pedophile Paul? The 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 manager. Hey, pedophile Paul is screaming Sam my name. Yeah, it sure is. And I can even get another employee over here. Other employee, come over here. Oh, hi, pedophile Paul. So spooky, scary skeleton Steve. Why don't you explain to this employee that this guy's name is screaming Sam? <laughs> and why don't we get creepy Charlie over here to help <laughs> as well? Creepy Charlie. <laughs> He's the old guy with the raspy voice, the only cliche that this story does not have. <laughs> and another thing is, how is he blasting freaking metal music throughout Blockbuster? One, when I went to Blockbusters, they didn't really have music systems. I used to go to Blockbuster all the time. Secondly... Blockbuster is a movie store that usually is nice, quiet, and serene. You know, usually they don't generally have music in there. Or if it is, it's very quiet. Yeah, and um, because people want to put their headphones on and listen to some of the they stuff. They wouldn't that they let the, the shady figure screaming Sam, you know, be playing that music. Uh... Well, they went into the wrong. Sh they probably went into the wrong shop. Well, they're supposed to go into Blockbusters, but they went into some like, other like stuff. Like a BDSM store, store uh, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I want to buy a Battlefield 4. The battle the Battlefield 4 freaking dildo on over here. Oh, God. Battlefield 4 dominatrix version. Um, 
the, the fact that the guy says that he didn't save it and then went on to say in the story best decision of my life but then a few like sentences later he's like but now I regret saving that thing that I didn't save you know I mean like maybe he's trying to do some symbolism trying to say oh I could have saved Carrie but are you kidding me are you kidding and the thing is <laughs> it's the remake it's the remake it's too new. It, it, there's no realism. There's like no build up, and the, the fact that they named the guy, you know, they named the main character by Mason. He basically gets a shit kick out of him by some weird Carrie dude. So I just kind of like picture the actor from Carrie just like breaking into his house and like playing a prank on him or something. <laughs> <laughs> You know what's the greatest use of our time, famous people? What? Scaring the shit out of our fans. Hey, Screamin' Sam, Pedophile <coughs> Steve, Spooky Scary Skeleton. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god. And this story just absolutely awful. Um, he, he then also throws in a cliche at the end as if to insult all of our intelligence by saying, He, she looked at me with those eyes and I had nightmares. You have yeah, to know said he's gonna sleep on it. So with the combination of all this, you know, the idea that there is absolutely no coherency to the story, he he says stuff in the fourth wall that absolutely contradict later things. The fact that he adds so many cliches and it's but it's almost comedic. He says when it is comedic. Carrie was Carrie stabbed herself in the head and blood dripped down the screen. With the machete. I wiped the blood away. I wiped the blood away trying not... Why would you even do that? If that was happening to my screen, I wouldn't go, yeah, I want to see what else is on the screen. I would... Uh, you know, I might do that Why? because I'd be like, no, my laptop! I paid 2000 for that! I'd better get my camera and record this. But now nah, I'll wipe the screen away Wait, first. let me go yeah. quickly take a screenshot of this sense. Mario Majin world. <laughs> <laughs> It's all the same guy, it's conspiracy. Uh. Oh dear god. This this was this story is the epitome of awful. It's not quite as bad as um the missing note six gen, but it's either just as bad or slightly less bad, but that was an awful story. Uh, stay tuned for next Friday as we review more shit pastas. Next Friday I should have a guest known as Aaron Shotwell, the writer of some of the greatest creepy pastas you've probably read. This has been your host, That Creepy Reading, and my special friend, guest that sounded homosexual, Michael Tats. You may say your name, then I can. Yep. Tats. All right. See you. I need a shower after this. Okay. They <laughs> clearly need to know that. <laughs> All right, see you. Well, after this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see you later, guys. See ya.